welcome to Claymore Division, I'm Omar Ibrahim and I'm going to be presenting to you today a little uh, painting guide that I like to call Stop Mucking Around. I call it that because a lot of painters uh, produce art on their models that is about as good as anything I produce, if not not quite as good, uh, and they spend a lot more time than I do, a lot more paint than I do, doing all kinds of highlighting and layers and etc etc and really we just want to get these little guys on the table and we want to play with them. Uh, so yeah, like I say, I'm not the best painter in the world, there are people out there who produce fantastic pieces of artwork, but often they're not played with because they're too nicely painted, um, so they're a completely different category if you ask me. So this is uh, how to paint a miniature for wargaming that looks good on the table and is nice and fast. Now this will be a little slower than I normally do, uh, because I would normally say with this little guy, this is a uh, Gripping Beast Dark Age Warrior uh, from their plastic box sets which will become one of my Viking Bondi for Saga. Um, and normally I would paint eight of these at a time because that's the groups they're coming. So that would normally speed up the process massively. But I'm going to paint this one little guy just to show you uh, quite how I do it. And my whole uh, attitude to painting is minimal effort, maximum effect. I also use minimal tools. I have, I'll go through quite what I use, obviously the essentials you'll need. Paintbrushes, I'm going to stop moving the camera about now. I use these little uh, Revel ones in a couple of different sizes. This one's more for slathering large amounts of colour on. I do have some finer brushes by some nicer brands and things like that, but I tend to use those for my more uh, uh, important models like my Warlords and uh, my Band Leaders and things like that, and that's when I want to do eyes. This little guy will have a little process called the Impression of Eyes, um, so I won't actually be painting eyeballs on him. So yeah. These little brushes are about three quid, sometimes four for the dearer ones, and, and they're also not in focus, there you go. Um, and I tend to replace those every couple of months, but I've never thrown one away yet. The old ones just become, you know, old brushes used for other things. Uh, also need paints. I use Citadel paints almost exclusively. They are not the best paints out there, but they are the most consistent. They're also what I started to learn with. And as far as, if anybody tells you that they're not good enough for miniature painting, they are lying. They just have something against Games Workshop, even though they are the most successful brand out there. Um, they're also really easy to come by because they're in every shopping centre. Um, Quality-wise, they're really, really good. I like using them, if they are a little thick. Um, for this particular model, I'll be using this arrangement of colours. Really quickly is XV88 uh, Calador Sky Blue. Cadian Flesh Tone, I use this for pretty much all of my flesh, except obviously if I'm doing uh, um, dark skin miniatures, uh, or Asian, or anything like that. Uh, Ungor Flesh, which I actually use for blonde hair. Uh, this is Mournfang Brown, I use more of that than anything else. And that's drunk. This is Iron Breaker, um, which I use for weapons and things. And these are two washes. Agrax Earthshade, which I'm actually running out of. And null oil. I have other washes as well, but they're the bulk that I use. You may have noticed the only colour I have in multiple is brown. I have every type of brown they have because I do a lot of dark age. I don't highlight with other colours on top of. I don't put blues on top of blues on top of pinks on top of blues to make certain colours. These are what I use. Is these two washes are what do the work for me. Um, I undercoat in a Ravel spray. Uh, I use antacrylate and throughout sight this it comes out uh, it's actually very similar to a color i used to use called tire black it's a very very dark matte gray almost black you kind of kind of can see it if i do that and that's a bottle of death which is just my uh, painting water um, and a tissue for wiping my brush um, right now what i will first do is spray a nice even color of this on this i can't really do that on camera in fact i don't know how much painting i will be able to do on camera so uh, I'm going to take him away now and spray him, and when he's all dried up, I'll come back and film the next bit. I behold the almighty spraying stick. Um, yes, as we're just painting a little Barry on his own here, but I, uh, I thought I'd speed up my latter process by uh, spraying all of my, uh, my unit together, although it should be eight, but one of their heads fell off and he's still drying. He should be here. Um, so I didn't manage to spray him as well. Um, yes, yeah, so this is how I spray. I stick everybody to a stick with a little bit of tack, in this case white tack, and then I spray them all nice and evenly and because they're all on a stick I can move them all at once and get on every angle of them and make sure everything's covered. Um, obviously making sure you don't spray on too much and don't spray too close so you start hiding details. Don't know if we'll be able to focus on this guy. Uh, there we go, so you can still kind of see all the details. The great thing with this spray, I'm hurting my hand holding it that finely, uh, the great thing with that spray is because it is a matte and because it is just off black, 
it still shows up all the details unlike using a real dark black um, but yeah, I understand why some people paint in, uh, spray in different colours. Obviously, if you're doing an entire army of something like Romans, and they're all wearing a lot of red, undercoat in red, uh, and then you've done half of your painting already, I get that. Um, likewise, I'm going to be doing some gladiators soon, and I'll be spraying those in a flesh colour, because they're mostly naked. Um, but yeah, I paint in black, because uh, if I miss any gaps, it just shows up as a little black line underneath, which just shows some kind of shadowing. Um, I understand why people spray in white to get the, the a lighter, more cartoony feel, but black's always been the way I've done things. Right, the next step is, obviously, we move these fellas out of the way. Bye, guys. I'll get to you later. And now we're going to paint Little Barry. And what I always start with is adding a little Cadian flesh tone to his face. Face. And hands. One here, focus. And one gripping his weapon. Um, don't worry about splashing all over the place I also at this point I, here's the thing, I don't really ever thin down my paints I know a lot of people would sneer at that but I don't, I think they come out if I give this a shake and an open now this should be flesh tone but yeah, I need both hands to open them, there we go um, it is pretty thick as you can see um, but I find a little bit of licking your brush which you have to do anyway, oh look at that lovely blob um, is enough to thin it down uh, so that you don't hide your features. Um, if you are adding five or six layers doing lots of uh, highlighting, I should imagine you do want to thin it down quite a bit. But I'm not going to do that. So this on his face, and I'm holding my camera so I can't do it whilst you watch. But I'll come back when his face is almost pink. And we have some flesh. As you can see, I'm quite sloppy with it. It's all over the weapon. Uh, oh, this hand's not too bad actually. It's all over his moustache and hair. And when I realised that I had to do underneath the beard here, uh, again, let's get some details. Holding your phone is not ideal. Get in, focus, focus. There we go. Um, you can see I've actually splashed all over the edge of his t shirt. That's fine because we're going to be painting other colours on top of it. And this paint isn't so thick that you won't see it. Um, yeah, I really want to get a good shot of his, of his face. You can see. Basically, he's already getting eyes, and I've done nothing but put flesh onto him. Um, the next part I will do is the bulk of the colour, so I'm going to paint his tunic blue. For no particular reason other than I want to paint his tunic blue. Um, and these folds here will uh, take the paint lovely, so I will return when he is wearing blue. He is blue. Um, tied it up around the neck there, so... Didn't catch any of the flesh. Um, also managed to slather paint absolutely everywhere. Even managed to get some on the spear. Um, and between the winning gas, uh, the leg wrappings, and the tunic, there is it's really hard to focus because it's so small. There is a little um, piece of sort of trouser there. I'm going to try to do that in a slightly different colour. Um, I'll probably do that first, actually. Um, yes, so I'm going to paint the little. Uh, you know what, I'll just do those two parts together, because you don't need to see every step. So I'm going to do this bit that's currently blue there, will be painted in Mornfang Brown. And the boots and the winning gas will be painted in this fella, XV, another type of brown. Uh, and then I'll come back and show you, uh, after that will probably be the belt and everything. But one step at a time, we'll do the legs now. And now he has some legs. Uh, when I actually got down to painting it, there's such a small amount of of trouser, you can barely see the difference. I could have done it all in one colour, uh, just to make it a little bit simpler, but that would have been fine. Anyway, the next step is the hair and beard, which will all be the same colour. They will be Ungor Flesh, because this man is basically going to be a weird shade of blonde. Uh, yep, that will be the next step. Uh, but first, lunch. I'll join you when I've consumed this pot of thing. Right, that's little Barry's hair done. Um, and moustache and beard and all that gimmick. Um, little thing I remembered as I was doing it, if you have a figure, and it's really hard to see, who has lips showing through a beard or anything like that, um, in actual most part for when you're painting any figure with lips, just paint the bottom lip, otherwise they look really pouty like they're pulling a duck face. Um, and if a mouth is open like this one, in 28mm you really don't need to worry about painting the inside um, because it's going to look black anyway. Sometimes if you've got teeth or something you might want to do that. 
But um, yeah, so I've kind of painted around the head and the hair. And the next step will be doing both his belt, all in one colour, it's all going to be brown. And the spear shaft, they're all going to be in this Mornfang brown. Um, I do realise, and a little while after I started painting my first figures, that actually Viking Age spear shaft would have been made of ash. So they would have been a little bit lighter, actually quite a similar colour to his hair, maybe a little darker. Um, but at that point I'd already painted half my army uh, with brown spear shafts, so in the interest of keeping them all looking the same, I'll continue to do that. So right, belt and spear shaft, brown. There we go, one belt and one spear shaft, all in brown. Uh, not really a lot to say about that, obviously you have to be uh, careful going around the sides and under the arm and that. Uh, but if you do have a do overlap and your brown ends up going on your blue or whatever colour you're painting, um, you can always over, over uh, overlap them and make them look a bit prettier that way. Actually on his face, and again it's trying to get a focus on such a small area. Um, but you can see I've actually gone over onto the skin a little bit. When we come to washing the model in a minute, we're going to hide all of that anyway, so don't worry about it. Um, the belt, again, he does have a little belt buckle on there, but this is a rank and file warrior sitting somewhere in the middle of my army. I'm not going to worry about painting the belt buckle. On some of my other guys, I give them sword belts and things like that. But um, on this guy, not really. Uh, last thing to do, we're going to do the tip of the spear, which has helpfully just defocused itself because it's so small. Um... But yeah, we're going to do the tip of that, we're just going to slather on a little bit of Ironbreaker, which is a nice light um, colour, because uh, when we do do the wash, all of the colours we've been putting on are going to end up going a little bit darker. So I tend to go lighter than I want them in the first place, hence the colour reason he's so very bright. Um, yeah, so a little bit of Ironbreaker, uh, and I will stick that on the tip of the spear. Okay, as you can see, the spear is painted silver up here, but I've had to position the, um, the model... Uh, there and hold the camera because I'm going to show you probably the most important part um, of making the miniatures look half decent now and I'm going to demonstrate it using the ridges of his hair just here. I'm going to take if I can get it into shot, Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to get a reasonable amount on the brush, give it a good shake get a reasonable amount of it on the on the brush. Now this is a wash, it's very thin and what it will do is flow into the recesses of the model so if I apply it to the back of his hair like so and let it drip down, you'll see that it's actually filling in naturally all the little holes. Now I'm preparing for this model to fall over any second because it's very uh, precariously balanced so I can film it. Be using plenty of this stuff, obviously not enough that you completely flood the model, but the more and more I add, the more definition you're going to get. And when that dries, that will make hairlines. Now we're going to slather Agrax pretty much everywhere including, now let's see if we can keep this all nicely in focus, on his face. Are you in there, little friend? There we go. Are you, in, are you something like in focus? Not the spear. Right, we'll try our best. Now, this is the other uh, type that I was talking about, which is called the impression of eyes. We're not going to paint the eyes. We are simply going to take a decent amount of Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash, and we are going to apply it semi-generously to his face and you'll notice already it's falling into all of the recesses under the eyes around the hair in the moustache and beard sorry I got disturbed there I am at work but it's bank holiday Monday and I'm dead but the uh, the one customer that came into the shop today has decided they want to come in at the moment I'm showing you something uh, like this but anyway it's given it a chance for the, uh, for the ink that we did put on to dry I've added no more than the last brush stroke you saw um, and you can see there's there's a piece of hair that hasn't been done and there's some hair that has and that's just going to pick out all the shading and detail and this is anybody that's spoken to me about work uh, about painting is, is when I say that the washes and the acrylic paints as a combination do the work for you and that's what I mean a lot of painters this is the stage when people start mucking around when they start adding different layers and they'll put light blues on top of arms and there'll be lighter yellows and yeah it does look great if you can do it well it does look fantastic if you can't do it well it looks terribly um, and if you can't you know apply all those methods anyway what really is the point when this is all going to get scratched off and moved about and it's going to need to be touched up here and there and you know using the exact shade of 40% of this color and 30% of this color and 55,000% of this and watering it down this way you're never going to remember all that if you need to touch it up you're stuck with this I'm using base colors straight out of the pots 
applying it and then using a small wash over. Is it the most intricate and fantastic painting ever? No, it really isn't. Does it work quite well? Yes. Is it fast? Yes. Is it in focus? No. There we go, he's back. So what I'm going to do now is apply Agrax Earthshade around pretty much the entire model. All of these little lines in the legs, all of the folds in the clothing, they're all going to get picked up by the fact that this wash is very thin and watery and it will just flow into the recesses of the model and do all the work for me. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of Null Oil, which is a black wash. I'm going to add a little bit of that to the spear tip to give it a kind of used appearance. Um, I'm also going to put it underneath his boot on this leg he's running. I'm going to put it underneath just to give it some heavier shadow. Sometimes, um, sometimes I do it on the bottom of the uh, tunic as well. Uh, a lot of people actually like to apply a darker wash to the legs um, because it, it you know, gives them an appearance of running through dirt or anything like that, especially to the boots. Um, the other way people do it as well is adding a wash on top of a colour changes that colour. So if I wanted him to have blue, I don't know, blue trousers and a blue top but I wanted to be a slightly different shade and I only have one blue, one black wash and brown, one brown wash would completely change the way that looks. Um, so yeah, the entire model is going to get a wash of Agrax Earthshade now, um, and then the spear tip and underneath of that right boot will get a wash of Null Noil. So a brown wash and a black wash, and I'll show you how that looks when I've done such a thing. Bye right, Barry. Okay, this is just a really short clip um, with some flash on so you can actually see uh, he's still very wet. There are pools of this stuff all over him, so you can see kind of what it looks like when you've put it on. Unfortunately, there's little sparkles you'll see. Um, I think there may have been some metallic paint mixed in uh, in the deep sort of uh, recesses of my brush that have uh, come out, but it's, it's not too bad. Like I say, it's this little rank and file guy. Um, under light, it actually will not look as, as good as uh, without a bright light shining at it. But there's the impression of the eyes that I was on about. He looks like he has something like a face, maybe squinting into the light. With an even smaller model, you wouldn't even notice. Concentrating on putting a little bit more wash at the lower folds of the cloaks and things like that as opposed to higher and it will naturally seem as if the, the sun is hitting him on the higher points like the elbow, the shoulders, things like that. Um, so I'm going to let this dry um, and I'll turn the, the flash off so you can see where it goes. I just really wanted to point out how much of this stuff you can use. There's another method as well where people use um, certain dips. Um, I've actually used a floor varnish before. You dip the entire model in to get this kind of effect. Works well, but I find it a little bit hard to control. It's good for things like horses um, and mass amounts of troops. You can imagine if you were a Roman army painter, um, that, that, that would probably be useful. There we go, he's dry, mostly, and he's done. Um, from start to finish, probably took me 15 minutes. With drying time, probably 20. Um, if I were painting many men at once, what I'd do is go, right, everybody is going to have a dash of blue, 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 blue. Everybody is going to have a dash of red, 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 red. And then all the belts would have been done in brown together. All of, you know, you do it that way. So you minimize the amount of time painting. And you could probably get a dozen of these guys done in an hour. Um, it's just the extra time putting paint down. Um, but yeah, this guy is now ready for the table, other than obviously being based um, and having a shield. Shields are done in exactly the same way, especially if you're having a nice simple design. Um, I'm not going to patronise you and show you how to paint a shield and stick it to an arm. And the same on the base, you just, uh, all I do is stick some PVA glue on the base, dip it in some sand, maybe darken the sand with a wash or a paint, uh, and then wait till that to dry, stick a little bit more glue on and stick some grass and stuff like that. And he is ready for the table. This guy's ready to fight. And I have not mucked around with him. So this has been uh, Omer Ibrahim with Stop Mucking Around and Paint Your Little Barrys. Go paint some barrys. Go. Paint the barrys. Paint them with your hands. And then make them die.